Good evening. I'm only going to talk to you for a moment. Uh, I'm an attorney with the Texas Civil Rights Project. I'm also a member of St. David's Episcopal Church, which is part of Interfaith Austin. And um, I came here to talk to you because of my personal experience with this issue. Uh, a large part of it came um, when I was representing uh, tenants and former tenants of the Woodridge apartment complex after their balconies fell. And the experience representing many other tenants in similarly heartrending conditions, um, terrible conditions. And I'm talking about the elderly, I'm talking about children, I'm talking about the disabled, um, many people. And based on this personal experience, I'm really delighted that the council is trying to do something to shake up the status quo because clearly something is not working. And although the devil is certainly going to be in the details and there's still a lot of work between here and the finish line, um, I really encourage you to move full speed ahead with both of these provisions. Because um, frankly, people in this city, you know, if, if they find themselves stuck in an apartment complex that you know, is full of mold or has uh, an electrical hazard or uh, has a balcony that might fall out, many of them don't have the option of leaving. I'm sure all of you know just as well as I do that there's a 97, 98% occupancy rate in Austin. And what that means is that if you leave your apartment, there's a very good chance that you will not find another one in time to avoid some time period of homelessness. All right? These folks cannot vote with their feet. The market is not going to save them. The only thing they can do that is the city. Um, not enough has been done in the past. I appreciate your, that you're working to try to do something now, and I'm really just here to try to impress upon you the urgency of this issue. Thank you. Mayor. Joy, um, Councilor Bertovo. I have a, a question for you. You know, in looking at some of the rationale for why rental, proactive rental registration programs have been enacted in other cities. Um, one of the things that surfaces is an, is an interest in supporting tenants who may feel, um, may fear retaliation and may not want to speak up. And since you've worked a lot with tenants on an individual basis, I wonder if you could speak to that issue, if that, if that is, has been true in your experience, that tenants may, um, may not want to call attention to conditions that their apartment may not want to pick up the phone and call code compliance? The fear of retaliation is a very real issue, and for good reason, because it's very real. Um, and I, in circumstances like Woodridge and other places where you're talking about, uh, you know, widespread problems in a complex, landlords do retaliate. Um, and they, they have a lot of tools to do that. And, um, you know, they incrementally harass a person until they either leave or they find a reason to evict them. And so, I mean, it is, it's a very real problem. It's a very real threat. I don't know if proactive registration, I don't know what, how that would interact with the potential for retaliation per se, but it is a very real problem. Well, the way it interacts is that you have the city periodically inspecting apartments, and so they are, I mean, the intent is that they are the eyes on the, on the property and can spot unsafe conditions. And so you have, you have interaction on the part of city officials with a particular property. So it's not incumbent just on tenants to raise those issues to the city's attention. I mean, that sounds excellent, both for uh, trying to fight, ward off the fear of retaliation and also for all the other factors that may go into uh, what's causing um, the situation in which the city is not uh, effectively policing conditions in these complexes. I mean, Woodridge is a perfect example. By the time the city finally went in there, there were over 700 violations. And I think if there were routine inspections like what you're talking about, I, I don't think that things could um, accumulate that way. Right. You might catch it earlier. Thank you. Mayor. Councilor Spellman. Uh, Mr. Giverin, I may give <laughs> I'll just pronounce it phonetically since that's how it was spelled for us. I answered anything that sounds close. I, I, you, you know a lot more about the subject than I do, but I do know one thing that you didn't know, and that is how many times the inspectors had complaints from Woodridge Apartments before those walkways caved in. 
and how many notices of violation were, were filed against the owners of Woodridge Apartments before those walkways caved in. And they still didn't catch the walkways. Uh, but they, they knew about Woodridge. They were spending a lot of time, obviously, in Woodridge addressing or at least answering complaints. Uh, I don't know how many cases got filed. I don't know what went to BSC, but this was clearly on the radar screen of our codes compliance people. They didn't need a proactive program to identify that this was a problem property, but still we didn't do anything about it. And it seems to me it's less proactivity, at least in the Woodridge case, than it is having the tools to be able to bring the problem to fruition and get compliance and get abatement of conditions. Does that sound reasonable to you? Sir, um, respectfully, my, my thought is that uh, no particular anecdotal account or set of anecdotal accounts is going to give us the one answer for the way to fix this problem. Mm -hmm. Frankly, one policy reform, two policies reforms, um, either one of them might not be enough. Uh, they might not be enough together. We won't know until we try them. And so I hear what you're saying about Woodridge and that there were complaints and that, you know, the, the structures there were not caught doesn't mean they wouldn't be caught somewhere else. Yeah, uh, sure. You know, I, I really appreciated some of the, the prior speaker's comments about um, just being more aggressive with the tools that the city has. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a great idea. I think, you know, maybe you should try all three things and bring in the kitchen sink while you're at it. Um, things definitely are not right, and something needs to be done. I suggest you take both of these measures, try both of them, and see what the result is. Well, we certainly agree we need to do something. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Joyce Pullman.